books of Kings, first and second Kings. These, these books basically tell the entire history of kingship in ancient Israel and Judah. And they go back and forth, introducing the king of Israel, then the king of Judah, the king of Israel, then the king of Judah, moving forward in time. Um, each king is introduced formulaically uh, with identification of his name, the number of years he reigned, and his mother's name. Okay, so there's a formula. And I have an example, let's see. Okay, Abijam began to reign over Judah. He reigned for three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Maka, daughter of Abishalom. All right, so that kind of introduction every king gets. Then what follows is more of a summary of the highs and lows of that particular king. So it's specific to each king. And in this case, the historians judge him poorly. They think he's a horrible sinner, a terrible disappointment. They do mention that he fought this one war with the Ammonites that was successful, but in general, he gets bad press. At the end, the close, we go back to the formula, and the formula cites a source. Uh, let's see. The rest of the acts of Abijam and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? Here we have something that's very close to our modern sense of a citation. Now, I put it in italics. The Hebrew text wouldn't have it in italics, so I, I kind of already clued you in that I'm seeing this as a written source that's available. Nobody has found the annals of the kings of Judah, but nonetheless, there's no reason for us to suspect they were made up. It's likely there was a written source on the monarchy, and the writer of this history was drawing from it. And he's basically telling his readers, if you want to know more about this king, I've just selected out a couple things. Uh, you can refer to this. It's sort of like the optional reading on a syllabus that we all tend to ignore. Uh, but it's a good idea. You know, this is a great idea. Read further. Um, so we have other, other books that are mentioned in the Bible. A, a complementary book, the book of the annals of the kings of Israel. And then we have a book of Jashar. So the ancients did have some written sources, and they knew how to cite them, and through citing them to give their own work a stamp of authority. There's also an Akkadian text dating to the 15th century BCE called the Autobiography of Idrimi. This is one of my favorite examples for how ancient writers asserted authorship. In this case, rather than simply footnote, the author commissioned a sculpture of himself. That's rather a, a, a lot of work to go to in order to assert your authorship. Um, so you would see this sculpture, uh, and you would say, now who is the author of this text? And the answer would be there because it's the man seated here, Idrimi, and the reason that you know he's the author is the text is in fact written across his chest. And it's hard to see that the cuneiform text is inscribed across his chest. But then even more, to just really get the point across, I, Idrimi, wrote this. It starts at the side of his mouth. You know, the words are literally coming forth from his mouth. So it's the ancient equivalent, really, of our cartoon bubble. You know, if the little arrow is pointing to this head, we know that person said it. Here, the cuneiform's coming out of his mouth. We know that this is what Idrimi said. 